sharing a screen. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so just a, a couple of slides to uh, to get things going, and then I'll I'll jump into a demo. Um, so I'm here with uh, Hedera Hashgraph. We're a public distributed ledger, <clears throat> which has a, a number of unique properties in that it's uh, really fast. Uh, we can do thousands of transactions per second. Um, the the latency is three to five seconds with 100% uh, finality. Uh, we have no leader, which makes the network fair and more secure. Um, our fees are very low. And for those of you who are running businesses, um, they're pegged to the US dollar. So uh, you have totally predictable fees, uh, you know, on in contrast with uh, most uh, distributed ledgers out there where it's a bit of a, a wild run. Um, and we are natively multi-sig. So the, the conversation earlier about uh, the, uh, the, the multi-keys for the signing transactions uh, really is interesting. Hedera is natively multi-sig. So um, maybe that, uh, that could work uh, really easily with key lists and threshold keys. In terms of services that we currently support on the network, we have a crypto service. So uh, you can transfer our coin between users. The coin is called HVAR. Uh, the fees are very low, which means that we can, we, we can genuinely support micropayments. Uh, you know, if you want to transfer a hundredth of a cent, you, you can do this economically on, on, on Hedera. Uh, we have a token service, which is the most recent, and uh, this is native. It doesn't use smart contracts, so uh, it's as fast as crypto, it's as cheap as crypto. Um, it really is opening up a whole bunch of use cases never seen before. Um, the consensus service itself is the power of Hashgraph, our underlying consensus algorithm, um, exposed to applications as an API. Uh, so again, you can build all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of applications now that benefit from a public consensus, uh, which uh, can truly scale. Schedule transactions uh, are also relatively new. They're uh, a few weeks old and they make uh, multi-sig transactions between multiple actors really, really simple. Um, and finally, we have uh, smart contracts based on solidity, and we can also store files with control mutability and revocation, uh, which uh, again, is a bit of a first in, uh, in anything in distributed ledger where everything tends to be you know, stated once and written forever. Um, then, uh, so for the next part, after I've uh, passed on the, the slides, uh, I'll give you a brief demo of our token service. Um, so this is a UI that we've put on top of the, the APIs essentially to create tokens, transfer tokens, and also demonstrate uh, an atomic swap. Um, the next slide is really just for the purpose of, this is recorded now. And if you look at the uh, YouTube video later on, you can go to any of those links. And that's really all that slide is for. Um, so let's move on to the demo. Um, I've created in, in this user interface a token uh, before we, we started this call uh, called demo token one. And I've given Bob, um, so I was the issuer, I've given Bob 200 of this token. Now let's issue a new token. Um, let's create a, a brand new, not this way, we'll go through the composer. So we'll create a new fungible token, which we'll call uh, vsum6, and we'll give it a symbol, very traditional um, features for tokens. Uh, we'll make it a whole token, uh, but we can, actually no, we'll make it um, a fractional token. So two decimals represent something that looks like a, a US dollar, for example, or any currency in the world. Uh, we can determine if the supply is fixed or variable. So I will, um, I will make it variable and I will start with uh, 50,000, which is really 500 whole, if you remember two decimals, uh, whoops, let me get this right, uh, 50,000. Uh, so that's 500 whole and those two decimals. And the next thing that we can do with this token is we can determine whether it's mutable, meaning um, is an administrator of the token subject to signing transactions with the appropriate key or keys, we can do multi-sig here, um, is that administrator able to modify the token? And we can say no, uh, but we can optionally say yes. And I'll, I'll say yes, that allows me to uh, delete them later on. 
to keep my account tidy. Um, and the, the next option we have here is whether we want to subject the token to KYC. Again, this is totally optional. And if I say yes, it means the keys will be associated with this feature. They don't have to be the same as whoever is the administrator or whoever controls the supply. They can be different keys or it can be a single key. Uh, who will be responsible for essentially flagging the relationship of a user to the token as having been KYC'd by a third party. This is not a Hedera feature as such. All it does is flag the token so that we know that user is able to transact the, the token because they have been KYC. We then have some compliance features uh, such as wipeable. And you might think, hey, this is crypto. Why would you want to wipe tokens? Well. Um, you don't have to, you can say no. Uh, but we take the view that there are some use cases where maybe uh, clawing back tokens from somebody uh, because they've been malicious in their usage of the token or for any other use case, um, being able to wipe tokens from a, an account may be useful. So that feature can be enabled, again, subject to one or more keys uh, signing that particular transaction. And then moving further along, um, we can also freeze um, an account or, or not, depending on, on how we decide to set it. Uh, so that, uh, Zach, I'll, I'll take you as a willing participant here. If I determine that you're doing something malicious with a token, I can temporarily stop you from using the token while I'm in investigating. And once that investigation is complete, I may wipe your account or I may uh, unfreeze you and, and allow you to enjoy that. Uh, that token, or maybe I'll freeze you until you've paid your taxes, you know, things like that. Um, and we can make this a, a default or not. So let's uh, go ahead and create this token. So you remember earlier I said uh, three to five seconds finality. So this transaction is now run um, and has completed, and it is final. There is no rolling back, there is no waiting for, for block confirmations. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with crypto, uh, if you want to get into more detail on what block confirmations are, we can uh, we can discuss in the breakout room. Um, I can now click on this uh, particular token and jump to one of our third party explorers. Uh, this is on our test net. And we can see that I've run some transactions to create the token, uh, associate the token and grants. This is happening behind the scenes for a, a marketplace account, which I, uh, which I create. Um, but let's go back here and uh, switch caps and become Alice. Um, so Alice here has uh, already associated with demo token one, and she is now going to associate with Nissan six. So that's a transaction she signs. Bob will do the same thing. And you may think, well, you know, what's this association all about? In some respect, it's all about tax, um, but other things too. Uh, what this means is that Alice and Bob are now willing participants in this token. They, will, they, can, they can receive airdrops, um, but had they not associated, they would not be able to receive airdrops. And why is this important? Well, airdrops may be liable to tax in some jurisdictions. So you've been given a million of those tokens, great, but now you have to pay with real hard currency for the, the, the taxable events, potentially in some countries. Um, and some of the use cases we discussed is that uh, Bob may be a very well-known uh, public figure and there may be some not very salubrious tokens out there. Uh, Bob may not want to associate with them, so they don't appear on his account. Um, so I've gone back to the issuer and um, now that Alice and Bob have both associated with the token, I can grant uh, their uh, KYC. Uh, if you remember, the, the token is subject to KYC, so that KYC grant has now happened. And returning to the tokens, having done all of this, I can now um, transfer uh, to Alice 200 or oh, 20,000 uh, of these tokens. So Alice will now have uh, 20,000 of, of the token within, within a few seconds. Every single click or operation here was a transaction on the ledger, um, which, uh, which has happened. So if we go to Alice now, we can see she has zero of that very first token I created. Uh, she has 20,000 of the uh, Visa V6 token. Um, and what we're now going to do is an atomic swap. So 
we're going to say that we're going to uh, exchange with Bob uh, demo token one, and she wants to receive uh, 200 of, oh, actually, no, 100 demo token one from Bob. In the same transaction, she will send him 10,000 VSUM6, and she will also um, pay Bob uh, 5H bar, which is our cryptocurrency, um, in addition to, to those tokens. So this is making up an entire transaction uh, which will be executed as a transfer, um, as an atomic operation. So if any of those balances are insufficient, the transaction would fail. And you should see very quickly here that um, Alice is now the owner of uh, 100 of the demo token. Her balance has dropped from 20,000 to 10,000. And uh, Bob has um, the opposite. And his balance has also gone up from uh, around 100 uh, to, to 104. Um, so that pretty much concludes the demo. And hopefully that's uh, giving us enough time to uh, continue with the rest. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for your time.